the Lord's peace be with you this morning and also with you. Jesus, you renounced violence, welcomed everyone, embodied peace, resisted injustice and gave your life in perfect love for all people. God of peace, have mercy on us. Jesus, your death on the cross is the ultimate example of non-violent love. Even as you were crucified, you said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. God of peace, have mercy on us. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of mountains, and shall be raised above the hills, and the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. We shall judge between the nations, and shall reconcile many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Well, good morning and welcome to morning prayer on Friday. We're unable to access our cathedral for our daily prayers. Uh, so Joss and I just wanted to take some time. We have our cathedral just here. But we wanted to take some time to share with you a special prayer practice that we have here at home. The prayers which get left in the cathedral at the Chapel Without Walls, which are written by people who come to visit, are regularly prayed through by our priests who serve at our midday Eucharists. I then bring the prayers home here and pray them through again before popping them into this special compost bin. If I open the lid, we might be able to see some some grapes which didn't make it and some prayers in this layer. There's always some nice worms there helping to make our compost. But I want to um, encourage you as an act of prayer for yourselves this week that you might consider ways that you might pray more meaningfully for those in your community those here amongst our cathedral Farno and those further afield and that God does something to our prayers. He turns them into something fertile which can produce fruit and bear much fruit for his kingdom and the furtherance of his transformation of our own lives as well as those for whom we pray. We'll add some more prayers to that compost bin in a little bit. But for now, Joss is going to read for us today from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, beginning at verse 31. Jesus cures a deaf man. Then he returned from the religion of Tyre and went by the way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers in his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to the heavens, he sighed and said to him, Emphifata, that is, be opened. And immediately his eyes were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. But Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Thank you, Joss. So we consider our own need to listen, to have our ears opened and our tongues loosed this day by our Lord. Our examine for today. Today is a fresh day. It is a good day because you have made it. Therefore, it is full of possibilities and hope. Jesus, you are our source. Help us to live the day with you in the centre.
you call us together as your body. Help us to share the day well with others. Yours is a revolution of love. Help us to share good news with the last, the lost and the least. Amen. And so we come now to a time of prayer. We pray to our creator God, the giver of all life, and we give thanks to him that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Gracious God, we thank you this day for the gift of communication. Eyes to see, ears to hear and lips to speak. So teach us not to simply speak, but to listen to you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit guiding us, that we may be still and quiet in your presence and know that you are God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who listen to you in prayer and ask for guidance, that they may speak to us of your word. And so we hold before you all those who serve and lead, those who minister in the church, for our bishops Justin and Ellie all those who counsel, and all who are called to listen to the needs and troubles of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask, Lord, for your guidance for the leaders of the nations in the ways of justice and peace. Give wisdom to our government and ministers as they seek to work for the good of all people and of your creation. Enable us to use our resources wisely and to share with others the gifts you've given. And we pray too that you would keep our ears open to the cry of the poor, those who are oppressed that we might be sensitive to the needs of others and respond accordingly. We pray for relief agencies and all those who work to relieve the suffering of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray too for time at home in this period of isolation and lockdown and ask that you would help us to listen to each other well, that we would listen to what is said and what is left unsaid. Teach us to be attentive and sensitive to the various calls on us, on our time and our attention, that we might share better and care better for one another. And so we ask your protection over our homes and loved ones. Lord, hear us. Graciously hear us. We remember before you all those whose voices are unheard. People who have been silenced. Those who feel unwanted and neglected. And so we pray for the lonely among us, those who have no help, those who are ill at this time in home or in hospital. And we name them before you now. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so I pray through these prayers left by members of our cathedral community, prayers for guidance and for love, prayers of remembrance for those who have died, prayers seeking a return to full health following cancer, 
prayers for peace. And prayers for those who have ill intent for others. Prayers requesting a closeness of heart to you, Lord, and your Holy Spirit. Prayers requesting renewal and a release of spiritual gifts and peace and love. And prayers for those seeking to rebuild their lives after the death of loved ones. As we commit those that we know and love to you in prayer, we do so knowing that your will is the best for us, that you long to hear and answer us when we cry out to you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And finally, we give thanks that the initiative for the miracle of healing that we read in scripture today didn't come from the man who was healed himself, but from his friends. And so we ask, Lord, especially that we may be open to the goodwill and prayers of others on our behalf. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Amen. God of peace, we come to you a forming nation in the footsteps of Isaiah, of Terore and Nakuku, of Tefiti and Tohu, of Catherine and Octavius Hadfield, and of your son. Through peace, may we address injustice, celebrate our unity and cherish our differences. The spirit of God dwells in us. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining us for morning prayer today. We pray God's blessings on you for the weekend ahead and look forward to seeing as many of you as possible on our Zoom service online at 10 o'clock this Sunday. Go to the Cathedral website and click on the link there and you'll be able to join us.